Alrighty, welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a PlayStation 4 controller working on Windows. And as we watch this crazy flexible guy do his thing, no idea who that guy is, but good to know that the guy can do that. <laughs> but anyways, this is great if you, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get my computer games to work on my TV. So I'm going to go old school and I'm just going to buy a big old long HDMI cord, plug it into my TV, but I want to be able to sit my butt on the couch and play the games. And so I need to get either my Xbox One or my PS4 controller to work wirelessly. Well, it seems the only way to do the Xbox One is get this stupid thing. So thank you, Microsoft, for ripping us off and not making it inherently available in Windows 10. <sighs> yeah, Microsoft with the dollar sign, right? It's an S. It's just kind of messed up. But not too expensive, but still it's just kind of annoying that you can't just do it over Bluetooth, which is what we're going to do with the PlayStation 4 controller. So I have a PlayStation 4. I'm going to use that controller to connect and run my games over Bluetooth because my laptop supports Bluetooth. So obviously make sure that your laptop has a Bluetooth controller. If it doesn't, this isn't going to work. Um, now both, both, I mean on an Xbox you can just or if you just plug in your Xbox One controller into a, into the USB port, it, it should work. And if not, you just get the drivers. But like I said, I want to be over on the couch. I want to have this work wirelessly. So to do that with a PlayStation 4 controller, uh, I'm just going to Google, and you're going to Google DS4 Windows. And you're good to get to this uh, website here. So what this is, is it basically downloads some programs that makes your computer think that your PlayStation 4 controller is an Xbox 360 controller, which is interesting, but it allows it to work wirelessly. And that, that's what I care about. So I'm going to hit download now. I'll download this to my desktop. Download it wherever you want. Okay, in, in Chrome it's going to download in the lower left hand corner and Firefox it'll be in the upper right. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm just going to create a folder on my desktop. So I right click, go to new folder. And I'm just going to try type in PS4 controller. Call it whatever you want. And I can hit extract all and just download or extract it that way. But it's just easier to just kind of click, select these, move them over. So that's what I'm doing there. So once you have this downloaded, you're going to open it up and you're just going to run Windows. The updater will run by itself. So I'm going to open up this one here. Yep, I'll hit run. Now you can choose where you want to install this. Uh, if you're going to be running around with this, program folder is the way to go. If you're more going to be using this on this computer all the time, go app data. But I don't really like app data. It's annoying to get to. So I'm just going to pick program folder. It worked fine doing it that way. Now it recognized there's an updated version. So yes, I want to use that. Hit run. Downloads, does its thing, and then I just hit open DS4W. So right now it doesn't recognize, if I come over to controllers, it doesn't recognize any controllers. So what I have to do, oh, by the way, the first time you do this, it might say something like install drivers. There'll be a window that says install drivers. You need to hit that, and then it'll actually tell you how to get it working. But that's what I'm going to explain anyways. Now I'm not going to record the controller because it's pretty simple what you have to do. But you got to hold down the PS button, the one in the middle, and you hold down share at the same time. And that puts it in search mode. It broadcasts its signal and says, hey, if there's any devices out there, hook up with me. So we won't do that yet because what we need to do is go into the Bluetooth settings. So I'm going to hit start, type in Bluetooth. We're just going to go to Bluetooth settings. And now my computer right now is sitting here searching for Bluetooth devices. So what I want to do is hold down the PS button and the share button at the same time. So I'm going to do that right now on my controller. So the PS button and the share button, you hold it down. And then you'll see the, the light on the PS4 controller starts to blink. And then, as you can see, my Bluetooth... Uh, controller recognized the, the PS4. So I'm going to click on that and hit pair. OK, 
Okay, so now it's going to sit there and, and basically install the, the controller right now is what it's doing. Now my PlayStation controller right now is blinking red. I guess that means that it's installing it. Now while it's doing that, the first time I did this, it didn't really work. Um, when I went to controllers, that didn't show up. Uh, when I went to uh, auto profiles, it didn't show up. So what I had to do is just exit out of DS4 Windows. I exit out of it and then just open it back up and then it, re then it recognized uh, that that controller was there over Bluetooth. All right, now we can see that it, it, uh, it's connected, everything's good, but my controller is still blinking red. So what I did is I came over here to Auto Profiles in Controller 1. Well, as you can see, the selected profile here is default on this controller that it recognizes. So, well, it's just blue now. So maybe we're okay. Maybe you don't have to do much of this. But what I did, and I know it worked, is I went to Auto Profiles and I said, okay, Controller 1 is going to be using this default profile because the control over here is using the default profile. Whether you need to do that or not, not really sure. But my controller is blue now, so that tells me that things are happy. Now, I can hit edit on this profile, and you can control all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to mess with any of this, but it looks like you can control what color you want the light bar to be. I don't know if that works. Haven't tried it. You can change what everything does. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not sure if this does rumbling. I've heard that it doesn't, but I've heard that it does, and I haven't tested it enough. But anyways, just so you know, you can come in here and play around with what all the buttons do. Now, the one thing I do need to mention, though, is once you do this, once you sync it with your controller, it won't sync with your PS4 anymore. So if you go over turn off your computer, head over to your PS4, hit the, the, the PlayStation button there, it's not going to turn on your PS4. So what you need to do is take a, the USB cord that you use to charge the controller and you're going to need to turn on your PS4, uh, make sure the, the controller is off and to turn the controller off you just hold down the PlayStation button for about 10 seconds and then it'll turn it off. So turn off the controller, uh, go over to your PS4, turn it on, plug in the controller with the, the USB cord like you're charging it and then hit the PlayStation button. It'll turn on and then it'll automatically sync back up with your PlayStation 4. So just be aware of that. Um, so if you're using the same controller for your computer and for your PlayStation 4, you're going to have to resync every time. I'm okay with that. It doesn't take very long. So that's how it works. That's how you get it to work. I uh, hope that helps someone out there. Good luck. I just think it's ridiculous that the <laughs> Xbox hasn't done something like this. And if they have, let me know in the comments because I would that would be great to know if, you know, natively Xbox One could do this with Windows 10. It should. But for some reason, you have to go spend more money for it to work, which is ridiculous. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. We'll talk to you later.